Hi guys! Okay, I'm finally getting to doing this video today. It's been crazy busy, so I am going to get through this video and get it posted for you. So, it is week four, um, sleep training methods. This is what you guys have been waiting for for so long. I just know it. Um, <laughs> so, I'm going to go through some methods with you. Watch my previous videos from the past few weeks before watching this one, please. Okay, you want to watch all that stuff beforehand. So, I'm going to preface this with my personal favorite of these methods that I'm going to discuss. My personal favorite that I did with my kids is the Ferber method, which is the third one I'm going to discuss with a little bit of method number two, the pick up, put down method thrown in. So I did a little bit of a combo. Um, that's the beautiful thing about this. You can kind of do whatever you want. You can blend these. You can do what works for you. So just keep that in mind. I'm just going to give you options here. Um, the first two I'm going to discuss, which are the gradual methods, um, I worry a little bit about creating sleep crutches and associations with this one, but however, you know, sometimes this is the best option for the parent, and so that's what you do. You go with what works for you as the parent, and everybody is going to want a different method, every baby is different, and you just have to figure out what's going to work for you and what's going to work for your child and understand that you might go into this being like, oh, I'm going to do this method and that might not work and you have to switch things up and that's okay. All right. So um, first method is called the chair method. Basically, you stay in the room um, in a chair near the crib or the bed until the child falls asleep. You can reach over to pat them and soothe them as you choose. Every couple of nights, you're going to move that chair or move your body a little bit further away from your infant. Um, you can still pat, soothe, shush them, and then return to your chair or your stationed area, I should say. If you're not in a chair and you're just on the floor, that's fine. Um, if they fall asleep, you can leave the room, but you need to return to the room if they cry and go to that posted area until they fall asleep again. Uh, eventually you're going to move your body and move the chair completely out of the room. So they just kind of learn to fall asleep that way. This method can take a few weeks. Um, it always allows you to be present though when they're fussing or crying. So for a lot of parents, that's a good comfort level for them. Method two, the pick up, put down and shush method basically. Um, so you're in the room, if the baby is fussing, you can stand next to the crib. You can soothe them by putting a hand on their chest, back, and shushing them. If they full on start crying, you can pick them up, soothe them um, standing next to the crib though, and then lay them back down before they fall asleep in your arms. So they are working on falling asleep on their own in the crib. Um, if this approach seems to stimulate your baby or um, kind of just like overstimulate them with you being there, then you might need to consider a different approach, which I'm going to go through next, which is more like the cold turkey methods. So method number three, um, the Ferber method. This is probably one of the most popular ones out there. So this is that gradual extinction method. So basically, you lay your baby down at bedtime after the bedtime routine um, that's been in place, which we've discussed uh, previous weeks, and give them a kiss goodnight, and then you leave the room. <laughs> if they start crying, set a timer for maybe five minutes. I offer flexibility here, though, with this. Maybe start at three minutes. Um, I know the Ferber method says five, but you choose the start time. You choose what you are comfortable with. If you can only listen to your baby cry for two minutes, then you go in at two minutes. So once that timer goes off, um, you go back in and you verbally reassure them crib side. So you're not picking them up. You're not feeding them. Um, you're leaving the room after one minute of that verbal reassurance. You then go out and you set your next timer for basically double that time or whatever set time you want to do. So if you started with five minutes, your timer is going to be now for 10 minutes. Or if you want to, you can just add two to three minutes to your previous time. Um, again, you have flexibility with that. So say you started at three minutes, the next time we're going to do a six minute and then we're going to do a nine minute and then we're going to do 12 minute pause. So you're just repeating the process and they're in there a little bit longer each time, maybe crying or trying to self-soothe themselves. So this method, very well researched. Um, it's important to be consistent though with the timing. So you just have to make sure you're adding that time on each time. So. The final method is the flat out extinction cry it out method. So um, this actually works well for some people and some babies and for some it doesn't work well at all. Again, you have to figure out your comfort level. So basically, 
You do your bedtime routine, give them a kiss, say goodnight, lay them down, and you walk out of the room and you see them in the morning. <laughs> Um, this method is best for those easy to adjust babies who don't have a lot of sleep crutches in place. There's not a lot of sleep associations in place where they need that pacifier. They need to breastfeed before bed, um, as far as like falling asleep to breastfeeding. So this works for those who don't have these crutches or associations. Um, it also could be really useful for babies who seem to get more upset when the caregiver comes in the room. So sometimes, you know, with the methods I talked about previously, if the caregiver is there, you might notice the baby is just screaming and crying and not consolable. And they're almost like, it's worse that you're there. So you might want to consider this approach. Um, the next morning when you come in to see them, you greet them with a huge smile on your face and you're so happy to see them and oftentimes they will give you that big old smile right back. So other things to consider with this um, sleep training stuff too is feeding. Um, feeding is a huge part of this. That's why it's important to talk to your pediatrician to find out when are they able to sleep train. I talked about this before. Um, you know, because you have to, if you're a breastfeeding mom or a formula feeding mom, you have to be able to cut back on the feeds too. And there's a way to do that as well. So with breastfeeding, you know, you're going to maybe cut back on the nursing um, session times um, and start working towards dropping these feeds in the middle of the night. Formula feeding, you're instead of decreasing the time, you might decrease the number of ounces in the bottle. So if you're starting with a six ounce bottle, you're cutting back to like a four ounce bottle you're offering and then a two ounce bottle. Um, so you focus on maybe cutting out those after midnight feeds first and then eventually start cutting them um, all out thereafter. So again, talk to your pediatrician, get a good plan in place, review these methods with them, see what you think would work best. Okay guys, I hope this was helpful. If you have questions, let me know. Um, I'm sorry if I talked really fast, but I was trying to get it all into one video. I apologize for this video being a little bit longer than my normal. All right, bye.